Hello everyone, my name is Fabian Proft. I'm part of the EmoNet peer mentoring subgroup and we are just coming out of a very insightful mentor-mentee meeting with Gerd Burmeister and Elena Nikifuro. And I would like to ask you, Gerd, maybe we can start. We were just discussing about mentorship and maybe you can share with us some insights, how you found your mentors and how you continue mentorship over your career. So thank you very much, Fabian. Uh, this was actually a great meeting and you addressed a very, very important point. I think mentorship is really important. I was lucky to have uh, two great mentors. Uh, one was uh, Jochen Kalten, a famous uh, rheumatologist, also president of ULAR. The other one, uh, Robert Winchester, who uh, in, in New York City when I was a postdoc, who uh, uh, generated the shared epitope hypothesis in rheumatoid arthritis. And they really helped me a great deal. And not only with the regard to the scientific and clinical work, but also privately to find apartments and, and all these things uh, to talk about aspects of childcare and uh, so they were more like friends than that you could ask even for difficult question I think that is uh, very very important and when let's say a paper was rejected or a grant was rejected they built you up again and to say oh don't worry it's gonna you're gonna be successful and they were right Thank you for sharing this, Gerd. And Elena, maybe because we know that you're very involved in international collaborations and maybe you can share your insights, how you get to this point and how you started your international collaborations. Thank you, Fabian, also for inviting me. Um, for me, Immunet really gave me the passport to find people from outside the country where I was based, the United Kingdom, to meet other people, to network, to form important collaborations that then took me to other parts of the world. And I think that's that's really important. It's important to broaden up your spirit, your mind, to see what happens outside your own setting, in your own country. This way you can learn new ways and find other ways to do research that you may have not thought of before. Thank you for sharing. And we had also another important topic, how to overcome obstacles that come into your way and maybe also how to deal with an unsuccessful grant uh, submission or a rejected paper. Maybe you can also share some insights about that, Gerd. Yeah, I think the basic message is there is never an unsuccessful application. It may be turned down the first time. Sometimes you have the opportunity to rewrite it and, and put it in again, maybe even a second time. But of course, because you have an exciting idea, you're excited about it, you need to follow it, and eventually it will be funded by a, uh, by a separate body. And uh, this happened to me frequently in my life. So don't give up if you think this is an exciting idea. You just want to do this and you will be successful eventually. Thanks for sharing this and also giving us some hints how to uh, yeah, proceed with our research. Elena, maybe you can, um, to wrap it up, also share some insights from your personal story, how to combine family life, um, clinical duties, but also research activities. Thank you. Well, I think it's important to um, enjoy the ride, learn from the journey, and as Gerd said, also enjoy the journey. Um, have perseverance, don't let the disappointment stop you. Have good time management and organization, very important, especially for uh, women running a family, um, trying to do research, clinical work, and find the right balance. Negotiate with the people who are around you, your job plan, and use it in a positive way. You can use research, which allows you more flexibility to run everything else that you want to run at home. Thank you both. Thanks for having the time. Thanks for sharing your insights. It was such a pleasure speaking with you and hearing from your story. Thank you.